We're back from Aircon and we've bought some games. Yeah, just one or two. Hi, I'm Libby, this is Julian, and together we make up Box Meeples, and today we're joined by Finn, our little needy dog who's missed us very much whilst we've been away at Aircon, and so can't do anything apart from have cuddles constantly right now. So he's going to join us. Yes, it's, it's going to make holding a box slightly trickier, but we all get free. Yeah, super awkward, but it'll be fine. The dog's got a cuddle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, these are all the games we've got in the kind of in the vicinity of going to Aircon. Mm -hmm. um, to make things very clear, uh, if we paid for them, we all say we paid for them. And if someone donated for content or given to us, we all hopefully remember to say, but if not, they'll say on screen, just to make things absolutely clear and transparent. Yeah. So let's get into it. Let's talk about the games we've got this year at Aircon. Now, just before we left for Aircon, I, I use a forum on BGG which shows about board game bargains quite mm -hmm. a lot. And someone said that Alien Fate of the Nostromo uh, was cheap. It was super cheap. This was £10 postage. And I got this, if I'm honest, just for the miniatures. Because <laughs> uh, I was going to use the miniatures on the the not alien version of Final Girl. And I was looking online at, at how much it costs to kind of get miniatures for it, and it's gonna work out more than getting the game. So I figured, well, I'll just get this, and it comes with miniatures. Uh, but fortunately, it's actually quite a good game. Is it? Yeah. Um, to play. Works well at solo, so I was kind of pleased so I've got this, and uh, yeah, I'll be using the miniatures in Final Girl, and as well, I've got a little game here to play. Well, you do like to paint the miniatures. So I do. It gives you a little project to do at the same time. Yes. Um, we did also, just before the conventions, so we haven't quite had time to get a full-on playthrough or review or anything like that done just yet, um, but we did get Imperium Classics very kindly sent to us from Osprey Games, and they also sent us the new Horizons as well. So there's a nice lot set here of lots of different characters. Both of these are mix and matchable with, there is one other version um, of the game as well. Um, and they all have different sort of cultures in them, mm -hmm. different types of, uh, they all have different abilities. There's different levels of difficulty in there for each of them. Um, so a really nice sort of card based game that we're excited to sort of delve into and look at how all the different factions work and in quite an asymmetric kind of way from what I understand. But um, yeah, you will see more about this game coming up on the channel soon. And thank you very much again to Osprey Games for sending them. Now, on the way to Aircon, we stopped off at my brother's house uh, to exchange birthday gifts and just mm -hmm. to see him again. Um, and he said, would we like the game Seventh Continent? Now, he's had this since it launched on Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a bit of a beast. It's quite a lengthy game to play. Um, and I think he's got a certain amount through it. Um, but he said he's unlikely to finish it. Would we like it? Yeah, he hadn't, I think, delved into the expansion no. content at that point. So. Um, I don't know anything about this game at all. I, I knew the box. I, I recognised the kind of box, but you knew about it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, then we watched a review that night, and it seems so up my street. It's got everything that I kind of like in these kind of heavy narrative games. Um, and apparently, according to Mr. Vassal, 300 hours worth of stuff in here or something crazy like Eek. that. Um, so, yeah, this is everything you can get for Seventh Continent that was given to me by my brother, which mm. is great. Yes, um, that's great. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to, you know, kicking this off and... And yeah, seeing seeing where it goes, really. But yeah, it was a lovely, lovely surprise. Mm. And and uh, a surprise to have more games in the car on the way up yeah. than we'd even taken with us <laughs> to play. Yeah, it wasn't the, <laughs> the best timing, because we had a car filled up with our bring and buy stuff and uh, obviously things we were going to go and play at Aircon. Uh, so getting another game in there was a bit of a struggle trying to find a space for it. But uh, yeah, like I said, I'm very pleased to have it. <laughs> I mean, I didn't even get into the bring and buy or anything. I was just standing, waiting for one of the um, aircon officials to come and help me with something work-wise. And in comes someone that I met there last year who saw me sort of working and we got chatting. Mm -hmm. And they came over to say hi and they said hi to you as well. Yes, um, And um, there was a nice little bag there headed towards the bring and buy. I was like, oh, 
oh, what have you got in there? And what they had in there was something that I had been looking for for a little while, and it's Great Western Trail Argentina. Now, I've only played, you know, the original Great Western Trail. Um, I haven't played any of the sort of New Zealand, Argentina, any of those ones. Um, and I was really interested in this one because my granddad grew up in Argentina. I've not been there yet, kind of always wanting to sort of find out more about that place without having visited yet. So it just, um, it, it's one I did enjoy the original. So it's one that I've been wanting to play for a while. And yeah, I was just stood by the entrance and somehow it just just happened <laughs> whoops <laughs> but yeah i'll be excited to play this one too okay uh, i'm going to start with games that i agreed to buy before i actually arrived mm -hmm. uh, yes yeah, so, so, i mean you were all over those forums yeah, the, yeah there's lots of people buying selling on aircon on the forum uh, and it works similar to the bring and buy but obviously if you had heavier games bigger games and you weren't able to sell them you wouldn't then have to bring them up because some people didn't drive they got on the train and yeah. um they, they wouldn't have bought the big heavy games up if they weren't going to sell them yeah um and it worked in a similar way to the bring and buy because uh for each sale uh, you're meant to donate a pound for each sale to charity so it was it all worked out quite well um and i found micro macro crime city uh, this is a game I've been looking for in Bring and Buys for quite a while, but never seen it for the right price. Yeah, I mean, you specifically were looking for it at UK. I GE was, yeah, last year. and it was more yeah. expensive in there than it was to buy new, so I didn't didn't buy that. Um, but I wanted to get this because I knew that we played the demo cases mm -hmm. um, on the app, and I enjoyed those. And I think it's going to be better physically because you can spread the map out and look at it like yeah. that. And obviously, once you've played this through, you know how it ends. So I thought it was a good candidate to be in the Bring and Buy. Yes. Um, yeah. So I was looking for this. And uh, someone was selling it on the on the group. So I made an offer. Um, and they were also oh willing to give, for absolutely nothing, this little gem. <laughs> Uh, so it's, oh the, my it's the Crystal Maze Time Travel Adventure game. Um, now this may not mean much to many people, particularly if you're an American, you don't quite know what the Crystal Maze is. Uh, but it's a TV show that was on when I was a child. Yeah. And they've had a reboot of it since. Uh, very tongue-in-cheek reboot. Uh, but it's it's all sorts of ridiculous uh, game show where people go around doing a series of, of challenges on the TV show uh, to earn crystals, to eventually go in the Crystal Dome and grab tokens. It's very, very silly. Um, but this came out in 1991 and it's absolutely pristine. It's not yes. this was a brand new game. Obviously, the, the plastic has faded slightly. Because yeah, of... I think it, it just um, sometimes it kind of dies a little bit as it gets a bit older, doesn't it? So you get that kind of yellowy, orangey tinge to the, uh, I don't know if it's acrylic or resin. Um, probably both do it, to be but, honest. Yeah, this is... um, but yeah, other than that, you wouldn't know its age at all. It's like 30 all years of... old. It's, it's... Yeah, all of those gold and silver tickets, they're, you know, they're not crumpled, they're not flat, like they're mm. perfectly flat. So Yeah, yeah. Um, and I remember seeing this in catalogues back in the day when I was, I was probably, you know, nine or ten. And I yeah. really wanted to get this game. I never did. Uh, and now I have it, which means I'm... Very, very lucky. Uh, and you're very, very unlucky because it means much like when we played um, Lost Valley of the Dinosaurs, we're going to have to play this and go, well, yeah. isn't it lucky that board games have changed in the last 30 years? Well, this looks very fun. I think we'll play it with the girls um, and, and just, yeah, see if it was as good as I thought it would be. Um, yeah, and if you're if you're interested in these super retro games that Julian keeps picking up, I mean... Let us know, and if you'd rather we didn't cover them, also <laughs> let us know. <laughs> but yeah, I was, I was, and so I got both of those for ten pounds, uh, which was an absolute bargain. I remember I met the seller. Uh, I said, Are "You sure you don't want more money for this?" But um, she was really pleased. It was going to a good home. So, oh, there we go. A company that we always seem to go to when we're at these kind of expos is Hachette. Uh, we know lots of people who work there. Um, we've got a really good friend Flav, who's the kind of manager of the. Of Hachette UK. Mm -hmm. um, so I was always going to go there and speak to them and talk to them. Um, and while I was there, I noticed this little treasure. Now, if you've been watching our top 50, you'll know how much I absolutely love the game Outlive. And we've got the massive collector's box. Yeah. Um, you recently bought me the expansion for it, the Undersea Underwater, underwater expansion yeah. for that. So we had nearly all of Outlive. But in here is all the Kickstarter exclusive content. 
Including a dog. Including a dog. Which is why I knew we didn't have this. Because uh, we're talking about, yeah. is that in the collector's box? Is it not? I don't remember ever seeing a dog. No, or a goat for that matter. Or indeed a goat. Yeah. Um, so now with this, we have everything now, Liv. Which makes me feel happy and because I'm, I'm a completionist for games I really, really <laughs> like. Um, and I, it's one of these things where you have that, if you don't back things, you're not going to get everything. So I felt really lucky to, do, to see this. And it's a shame yeah. there's not more of this at Aircon. Because it's one of the things I really like at UK Games Expo where people are selling promos or harder to find bits. There wasn't as much of that at Aircon this year. Um, but this was an exception. This is really good. And while I was there, um, they'd seen some videos uh, where I've talked about suspects. Yes. Uh, I've been working through all the suspect cases. Uh, I've, I've played through one box completely. I started with another box, but this is a extra case that wasn't featured in in the box releases. Um, so it's more of like a demo case for people who haven't played it before. But obviously, I have played it before. But this is new to me. I um, haven't, so I mean, I can, you can start I can with do this. the demo case and see what that's like. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoy playing those on the train and after commuting to London. Um, and yeah, so it's a nice little freebie yeah. that they just gave me. Um, I have got a, a game, a little game that was gifted to us by Origami Games. Uh, we went over there and had a, a good look at what they had on offer there, which was, it's lovely to see um, people coming all the way over from Singapore and bringing us some of those hard to find Asian games. Um, we love Buffet Boss. We've spoken mm -hmm. about it quite a few times on the channel and they've got quite a, quite a number of games which are really interesting there actually. So this is kind of like... I think almost like a button shy. I think he said there was about 16, oh yeah, 16 cards and the rules in here. So um, can you deduce the secret flower? So it, uh, it's called the secret flower. So it'd be interesting to give that a try. Maybe it would be something we can take away traveling with us, holiday, honeymoon, mm -hmm. holidays, things like that. So nice and compact. And whilst I was there, I also picked up this cute little cube of reef. Um, and you're laying out these tiles and trying to see which whether you can get small fish, big fish, and it, it looks like a very simple game to play, but a nice kind of, yeah, good for travel, I yeah. thought, again, like nice ocean feel, gives me those holiday vibes, so I'm excited to, to give this one a play. Reef Rescue, actually, not just Reef. Um, and this one I purchased, but the little card game was gifted to us, so thank you very much to Origami Games. Similarly, um, we were staying actually with someone who works for Level 99 and she gave this to us, uh, which is Noir of the Indines, which is set in the same universe as Imperial Spells and Steam. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a little two player game that takes five minutes to learn and 10 minutes to play. Um, a mysterious figure has been stalking around the Indines with only one thing on their mind, murder. Oh. More that murder and take on the role of some of the most iconic figures from these series and play a cat and mouse game where the killer and inspector face off in a high stakes duel of wits. It sounds right up here. Uh, yes, yeah, so um, I really enjoy Imperial. Uh, so yeah, this is it's nice to get another game in the kind of universe because it's mm -hmm. a beautiful, beautiful universe that they they create for that. Um, but yeah, this so this is obviously given to us, and uh, we might do a playthrough on the channel. Mm -hmm. Well, talking of two player games, one that I've seen quite a bit about recently is Sale, um, and so I couldn't resist picking up a copy of this uh, from Games Law mm -hmm. actually. Yeah, so this is one that I purchased, but I've heard so many good things. I love the theme. I love sailing um, and I'm excited to play this one. I think it's it, it'll, it'll be interesting. Maybe we can do a playthrough on the channel. Perhaps if anyone's interested in that, do let us know. Um, the box just looks lovely and vibrant, doesn't yeah. it? So, yeah, um, that was my little sneaky treat to myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do let us know if you are enjoying our playthroughs and we can do more of those. Obviously, mm -hmm. smaller games, uh, we, we want to play them kind of showing the entirety of, of the game. Yeah. Um, but do let us know if you want to see things like that. You would have seen on the, one of the vlogs that I played Lorcana mm -hmm. and completely fell in love with it all over again because of Into the Inklands. Yes. Um, and because I completely destroyed <laughs> the person who was demoing <laughs> the game to me, um, I, I went up and I said, you know, um, can we have a quick game of Inklands because I haven't, I haven't played it? And he said, oh, do you know how to play? Have you played Lorcana before? And I said, I think I know how to play. It wasn't a case of um, Star Wars Limited all over again. Sat yeah. down and uh, yeah, I, I got to 20 pretty quickly. You must uh, have had a good, it was, good card 
choices. I would say they rigged the deck so someone playing would win, but we shuffled. So yeah. I'm just awesome at Lorcana. No, you were just lucky. Um, but yes, yeah, so I was on 20. I think he was on 11. Uh, so nice it win. wasn't too close. Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyone who plays at the expo, uh, you know, Aircom, uh, get to take home a copy of Scrooge McDuck and it's one of the ones that has the special symbol at the bottom that says it was a promo at a, an event mm -hmm. uh, and this is a foil uh, for Scrooge McDuck so this is actually the first of the Into the Inklands cards we have yes, although we just yes. bought a load more so it won't be the only one in our collection Oopsie. for long yeah I don't know why we're doing a haul now when we've literally just uh, <laughs> checked out some games some on more Chaos games. Cards this evening but you know because <laughs> that's what you do when you come home from, an, uh, from a convention isn't it you just yeah. buy some more games having just bought a load of games <laughs> so I did get to pop into the bring and buy uh, once or twice I mean you went in there many I, I kept occasions. on going in and out and I think that's the best way of doing it uh, when I first went in there it was absolutely jam-packed mm -hmm. and I found it quite overwhelming uh, so I just I just ducked out and, and it's a case of you know, you don't know what you're missing out on if you don't know. Uh, so there might have been some fantastic bargain in there. Some probably would have grabbed it before I did anyway. Yeah. Um, I, I just didn't feel entirely comfortable in there. So I came out, but I kept on going in throughout the days because as people arrive, they hand in their games, they go on the shelf. Yeah. So that, you know, as long as you keep checking in, that's a good way to get bargains. Um, and you can see on their game system, they do list everything that people have got up for sale and how much they want for it. So, I mean, if you have the time, we didn't have the time really uh, with everything that we were we were doing to sort of scroll through all of that and mm -hmm. see. Um, if you're looking for something specific, I think that's really, really helpful because obviously you can just search for that one item. But if you're just kind of meandering, thinking something might catch your eye that you'd forgotten that you were kind of was on your radar kind of thing yeah um that's a bit tricky because obviously there's so much in there um but uh yeah i did get to pop in once or twice mm -hmm. towards the end of the days um and i saw a game i think i'm gonna say otis yes I think otis. It's otis um but yeah it it sounds interesting i'd heard about it on the Dice Tower previously and I thought I remembered them saying that they enjoyed it. I've since checked back on a video. Mm -hmm. They did enjoy it. Did. So that was a good memory. Phew. Um, and this was a grand total of £15 in the bring and buy. So I thought that was pretty good. Um, mid 22nd century oceans have engulfed the world. The remaining fragments of humanity survive on few pieces of land above sea level in otis colony you strive to build a future for your people by retrieving the submerged debris of past civilizations so i like the idea of the theme of like going down and diving yeah. for stuff that you need and you did that um, a lot when you were you know throughout your life you've been diving your families yeah got a history of diving at wrecks so. it turns out i've bought quite a lot of watery games just I'm now not shocked by this i'm, I'm more <laughs> shocked by the lack of viking spoiler warning yeah uh, no viking no, games no vikings but yeah. but hey this this sounds fun so um I'm yeah sure. you kind of did a me and i kind of did a you uh because you plumped for games that you vaguely knew about yeah um whereas all the games i bought i knew in advance about so you did the gambles no, this time uh, um, i mean i've had both of these in my wish list <laughs> at some point amongst the hundreds of games um, on your wish list there is over 100 games on my wish list <laughs> even though we have plenty already um but they're, they're, my wish list is my like on my radar games yeah and yeah i think well certainly the next one's been in baskets a long time and this one I had I had I definitely had remembered seeing good reviews of it and people talking about it so um yeah, yeah it wasn't completely out of the blue even though I hadn't maybe said oh have you seen that game I you know yeah. we should buy that um it had come sort of slightly lower than that but well, yeah the first thing I bought in the bring and buy was Fort um if you know how much i love moot you know how much i love leader games um we've played this a few times with someone else's mm -hmm. copy and well, i've played it once you've played it a couple more I've times, played it three times yeah. now. Um, and I, I i quite enjoyed it and it felt very different to root which obviously it's an entirely different design of course it would just mm -hmm. the same artist um there's a few copies of this floating around in there that varied in price from sort of uh, 10 pounds i saw one copy this one was 15 um but it's entirely shrink wrapped so it's never been played mm. so we know everything's in there uh, it's obviously going to be in, in mint condition so uh yeah it sounds 
for ten pound more than that usually on retail. I think it's around about the twenty five pound mark. Yeah. Um, some include the cats and dog expansion, uh, but it's a it's a bit more worn. So I thought, well, I'll pay for five pounds and then get the cats and dog expansion if you play it quite a lot. Um, Another time. Interestingly, the previously mentioned accidental additional purchasing that's happened since we returned from the show does include a hoy. Yes, I was um, looking for a hoy in the bringing so, bio. Yeah. yeah, we've kind of leader games up even further than we had yeah. already. And and Ahoy is another game that we have played um, previously. And I, having only played them each once, initially my gut feeling says I prefer Ahoy to yes, Fort. I do. I do. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously we'll play them a bit more and get more of a feel. I was, yeah, I was looking for Ahoy. There was one copy in there, um, but it was in, it was in French. Ah. Um, and if you know the game, there's, there's lots of, are cards that you have to read, um, mm -hmm. so it's not really a language independent. Uh, so I thought, well, that's just going to be an unsatisfying experience. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, 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 I forewent that and thought, well, I'll get a new yeah. copy. Well, it turns out it was in the sale, so we how could we resist, yes. right? Exactly. Um, I quickly jump in and say, along with buying leader games whenever we see them, <laughs> it seems I always can't <laughs> come back from a convention without getting a leader game. Uh, a Red Raven game, yeah. Yeah, um, well, you didn't come back with two, though. Very there was proud. Well another done. one in there. Um, Ancient World was in there. And I, I don't know if I regret not getting it, but I didn't want to get it so we wouldn't have to have a complete collection. But we seem to be heading that way anyway. <laughs> I've heard about Rome, uh, and I think I'd heard about it because uh, in Near and Far, it has characters that you can use you can use Rome characters in that and I think you can use those characters in Rome or something similar so I was aware of this uh, mm -hmm. you're much more across all of their games um, than I am but of the smaller ones we've played recently um, I quite enjoyed uh, Klondike um, when we played that I enjoyed 8 Minute Empire so I thought well let's give it a quick go and it was only £15 yeah so um, yeah. and this is this is in mint condition but I, yeah I do love the art and the style of these um, and recently we've been playing Megalands we have. I enjoyed that um, kind of um, matchy coro feel to it, sort sort of. Yeah, kind of push your um, luck, matchy coro yeah. blend. Um, yeah. So I thought, well, let's let's give it a go. And and if we don't get on with it, then are we going to uh, bring them by in the future? But I think we are <laughs> quickly heading down, needing to buy every Red Raven game. Yeah. Even though I'm trying to resist Full the urge. collection. Whoops. Um, next up for me is one, um, as I said, it's one that I have had in my basket for a while and I haven't got it because it's been out of stock. I've been able to get it. Um, but I'd heard some good things uh, recently about um, Ashes Rise of the Phoenix. Here it is. Um, and I saw that in there and I said to you, oh, I've heard great things about this. So short, shall I get this? Um, and it also came with these two deck boxes, um, which look pretty cool. Um, and you initially said, oh, oh, where's this sprung from? Why are you mm -hmm. saying you need this game? Are you being a bit impulsive? Um, <laughs> um, and then, I sort of put it back in a corner and thought, okay, well, I'll mull it over for a little bit are and we, see. Uh, let us know in the comments, are we the only one who does this? Who hides games in well, it, it, kind it of corners? Well, it was in plain sight. Yeah, we don't, we don't, you know, don't push them underneath. Hidden. Yeah, no, but we kind of leave them in more... More discreet More discreet area. areas, with a few games perhaps <laughs> on top of it. mull it over. <laughs> I find a copy of Monopoly and place it on top of that and go, well, no, I was going to get in there. <laughs> that counts as hiding. <laughs> um... But then we went to the Watch It Played event, uh, one of them, um, and then all of a sudden was mentioned Ashes Rise of the Phoenix Born, and Rodney was like, oh, I love that game. And I was like, told you so. <laughs> so then I went back you in. You went straight back, we did, the event finished. We did you, you get almost it. Jog, you did that kind of walk-run thing. We were trying not to run somewhere, but you clearly are running <laughs> somewhere. And uh, yeah. Um, and this is uh, includes six expan six expansions, decks and dice. It's sleeved and the two deck boxes. So it's quite a, a full set here. So I thought that that would be fun. We obviously have been having fun playing Locarno mm -hmm. and stuff. That kind of card game base. So um, give this one a try and see. Well, the last game I got from Bring and Buy was Takayo Duo. 
Which has been on our radar for a it long has. time. It uh, has. I remember mm. seeing this at UK Games Expo. Mm -hmm. yeah. They were demoing it the year before, I think, yes. as well. Uh, yeah. So it was, it was for sale, I think, last year. Um, I didn't get to pick it up. Um, I was kind of waiting to see... Because I, I kind of feel that like Kaido works quite well at 2 anyway. You do have to kind of have a dummy player between you that you whoever's behind moves. Or I can't quite remember exactly yeah. where it works. Um, but yeah, I, it's a game I do really enjoy. And we often get it out for when we're kind of playing... With people who don't play as many board games because they're yeah. very easy to explain yeah. them quickly. Um, the art obviously is fantastic in these games. Uh, so I saw this ten pounds. I was like, yes, that's that's my sweet spot. Yeah, uh, I'll buy it for that. Uh, and it's very small. Yeah, it's a, it's a good size because um, Takedo is also one that we would play on an app when sort of travelling or something mm -hmm. like that um, because it's easy. It's quite kind yeah. of relaxing. I I feel like it's a chill game. Um, so yeah, duo could be one that perhaps would actually fit into a bag yeah. physically rather than um, having to do it on a screen, which you know our preference would always be to to, play to table when we can. Yeah. yeah, I was pleased I found that. Mm. And this was one of these. So proving the point that you don't need to go there as soon as it opens. I got this quite late in the day. I think on the Friday. Right. Um, so yeah, it, a test come in because there's a system they have where they bring the, the games that just come in close to the front. Um, it's not alphabetical or anything there. Uh, so that's kind of where you go first. And it was just there. So I was like, oh. And I'd definitely been early that day and it wasn't there. Yeah. So. Um, well, obviously people arrive at all sorts of times. Some people were working on the Friday and then would come after yeah. work and turn up then. Um, a lot of people dropped everything off as soon as the bring and buy opened at four o'clock on the Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we, I mean, one of our comments actually um, was someone who was only coming for the Sunday and was hoping that they would still be able to get stuff into the bring and yeah. buy and people would, would still, still be, be looking yeah. around. And, and by the looks of it, they were because, I mean, Sundays, I mean, obviously people were taking back all the stuff that hadn't sold. Um, but, I mean, the bring and buy looked pretty empty from sort yeah. of lunchtime onwards on the Sunday. So um, that would suggest that sales had gone quite well. Yeah. yeah. Now you might have seen in the vlog that we played Star Wars Unlimited and we took it beginner's tournament very, very literally. Um, <laughs> yeah, as in we hadn't played it at all and at that point just hadn't had a chance to go and demo no, we didn't. at all. We didn't um, know, we vaguely knew the rules. He'd spoke briefly to Matthew Jude about any tips, we're going to go and play this. Yeah, he gave us one tip. I, I tried to take that on board but still lost, so... Yeah. yeah. So we, we turn up and they're like, oh, hands up if you haven't played this before. And we sheepishly put our hands up. As did Die Rolling, which is a yes. fantastic YouTube channel you should subscribe to if you're not already. Um, so they were there as well and they're like, okay, it's not just us who's interpreted this very literally. Yeah, and I think there was actually then another group that sort Someone of else sneakily came in. turned up. So there was a few of us that hadn't played at all um, before. But... So we, we couldn't do the drafting that others were doing, but they still gave us um, a box each. They did indeed. Uh, so in this is, I think it's six, six booster packs. Yeah. And the tokens and an instruction rule book, um, which is yeah. very, very generous yeah. of them. And inside you get the like the box to store the bits in. Um, and you, yeah, you so won, so you got an extra booster pack, yes, right? Yes, so, so we sat down, played, learned how to play it, and then we played between us, and whoever won that got the booster, and you yeah. got instead. And I also got a given a consolation prize of some card sleeves, so that was very kind of them. Um, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it's a fun little game. Um, I don't know if it's ever going to replace Lorcana for us, but I think we're going to play it some more times, mm. build our own decks, and then see if we want to maybe get the, you know, the starter decks and have it as a game we can play. Yeah. Uh, but we do have Star Wars deck builder already. Yes. Uh, so it's, it's whether we need both. But yeah, I enjoyed when we played it. Yeah. It's... I mean, you, uh, it, you were a little bit ruthless in yeah. that it took quite a long time to get out my leader I was Darth Vader um, and you can you can sort of activate your leader so you're activating Luke mm -hmm. um, a little bit earlier than I was in the game um, and then I managed to activate Darth and without being able to really play him you were able to take him out so that felt quite punishing but I think obviously the more you play you yeah. the more you realize what can happen and how to avoid that and maybe time bringing a powerful unit out like that 
differently yeah. so um yeah i definitely think it needs a little bit more more play but um yeah fun to have that kind of experience with the star wars theme which we really love yeah. so and yeah. i felt like i was trying, trying to unlearn lorcana while playing <laughs> it because we know lorcana so so well i did enjoy actually that you have two areas one for ground and one for space and so you can strategically work out where you're fighting yeah. to your benefit that was an interesting element of it so yeah that was fun uh, at the end of uh, the event, yeah, at the end of Aircon, uh, you're meant to collect your games and bring them by that have been mm -hmm. sold. Mm -hmm. um, so you go in there, you claim back your games, they scan them, you take them home with you. But obviously some people have left at that point uh, yes. or don't want to go back, unable to go back, for whatever reason. So what they do is they give them enough time to collect them. Mm -hmm. And then after an hour and a half elapsed, they take all of the games that aren't sold and they put them at the front of the hall. And then you can pay what you want for them and a hundred percent of the sale of that goes to charity yeah so normally in the bring and buy they would take off like a cut of 10 percent sort of rounded down to the nearest pound um so say you know if you bought 59 pounds worth of games in there they would take a fiver off and that would go off to charity so then at this point it's literally just the charity yeah. money that happens because obviously the rest of it isn't going back to the owner who no longer wants them so now, it's a really good system yeah and it was that. it was pay what you want so you can just be you know just get into charity so be generous uh but it's a bit of a free for all um i it, yeah i saw them coming out and i was like oh and they told me at the bring and buy that it's going to happen because i said oh i'm still not sold games uh so i knew i was kind of prepared i was poised <laughs> you were ready ready to, ready to go like a ninja uh and as i started thinking about i kind of just i did the walk run thing where i'm not trying to run but i was walking quickly um and i did quite well i think there's a lot of kind of party games in there that weren't sold for a reason but there were a couple of gems amongst them and initially yeah. i went for things that would have components we could use for your print and plays or for kind of leveling up other games. So we got this one called Zebulion. <laughs> Zebulion. Uh, Gal Galactic Control, um, which has had relatively mediocre reviews on BGG. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I, th I think this is the one that only had maybe four or five reviews and someone who gave it a not great review, accused two of the reviews of being inflated reviews to balance out Yeah, the there, there, were, there were tens. That, I don't think this yes. is going to be a ten game. It's not a clip, is it? Maybe not. Maybe not. Um, but you never know. You never know. I bought this because in it um, is, amongst all the kind of cards, are these. Um, spaceships. Little spaceships and tokens. Uh, and I thought, well, I can use this for tiny epic galaxies. And that was my logic to buying it. And obviously there's loads of tokens yeah, and, and things and bits the and bobs. tokens have got gold stuff on them. That seems fun. Great. So I thought, well, for so. a charity donation, that seems great. Um, but we've watched some uh, reviews and I think we'll definitely play it. We'll see, you know, how good it is. And if not, we shall use the components for, you know, levelling up our um, print and plays. Yeah. So I got that. I was thrilled to see this one. Ruthless. Yes. Because you played this with Dan uh, from DB Games on mm -hmm. her YouTube channel uh, last year at UK Games Expo. I did, yeah. I think yes. I was taking things to the car and you came back and, and you were having this really spirited game of this game and I didn't get a chance to play it. No, yeah, I think it must have been that opening night, the Thursday, and you were trying to get games into the Bring and Buy. It was, I mean, last year's UK Games Expo, the Bring and Buy was yeah, it, Carnage. Yeah. Um, so then, uh, and then they'd had to close it, so then... You then had to take them back to the car, so it I was think that's at what that it was. point. Yeah. And you, I think you were playing. That we played. Yeah, you played with, with Dan and his wife. Um, yes, and you really enjoyed it. Um, and I, yeah, I mean, I, it's pirates. What's not to enjoy, right? So I was, I was really surprised this was in there. Um, it was it had gone in the bring and buy for eleven pounds. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a, a kind of hidden bargain. Yeah, I'm really chuffed I got. I don't think it's one you can get that easily no. actually. So um, and yeah, I, it had been on my radar. I saw it there. And I was like, what is it? I, I said. Um, I actually asked the person who was in front of me in this kind of is that is that your copy? Uh, thinking they'd kind of put their something they bought at the bring and buy down while I'm looking at the games. I mm. went and I thought, well, uh, so I grabbed hold of that. Now the last one I got in there. Um, Gosh. 
no. you, if you've seen Julian buying stuff previously at the Bring and Buys, there's always that kind of, I mean, I know all of these are the charity donation ones, but there's always a moment where you kind of give yourself a five pound budget and get well, something crazy and wild. And I feel like this I, is the equivalent of that this well, year. Well, I got this for, um, it's got miniatures in it. It does. And it has it two, uh, the two wives in Bill and Ted's. I don't know how well you know the film. Yeah, it's um, a Bill and Ted game, everyone. So as uh, Elizabeth and as Joanna... It's his epic adventure. Yeah, so it's based on the first film. Right. Um, and that is a film I really loved as a child. Uh, watching it back now, it's not aged well at all. Um, but yeah, I got this solely for the miniatures. And then I took it back to our table where we were playing um, Beaver Creek. And, wow. our, and our friends. That's a great game. Um, and I kind of, I kind of came over kind of... Good up, because uh, I'm so tough and ruthless. And uh, I sat down and I explained to them that I was just getting this for the miniatures, and they thought that was a massive shame because mm -hmm. this is a Kickstarter, I think, a couple of years ago. Right. Um, and we got a quite fancy edition with the miniatures in. Uh, it's a lovely production. I don't think the game's particularly great, but I don't know. Yeah. I think it's very average. Again, the reviews aren't brilliant. No. Um, so I did say, well, I'm just, I, I might just throw the box away and, and just take the miniatures. Um, and they seemed horrified by that idea. So I did promise them we would play it. Yeah, no, I think we should uh, I mean, at least play. I think you can't kind of cut and paste these things yeah. out without at least giving them a chance. So, yeah, yeah I got I got Bill and Ted's essentially for free. I was given a charity donation, so that was great. Um, last but not least, we were gifted, thank you very much, um, a couple or oh, three little card games here. Um, so we have Woof Days, we have Dino Days, and we have Cat Days. And these are all charity games. So um, they also have another, like a larger big box game called Far Place. Um, and it's all about taking dogs to a rescue home. Um, and all the proceeds of it are going to that charity. Um, so it's nice that they also have these lovely little card games for us to explore. So we did have a quick mini play of Woof mm -hmm. Days when we were there and you're trying to be able to lay your dogs out on the different days of the week. You're sort of essentially taking them out on a walk for all seven days um, and you have to place one dog near to another dog or one dog can't be next to a certain other type of dog and there's some different special yeah. actions and things um, so it's from age six up it's a two players five to 15 minutes it's saying on the box here so yeah but we played it five um, minutes when we're sitting down for the yeah time, exactly so. Um, a card game where you fill your week with dogs to score the most points and, and as i said it goes to the far place animal rescue so that's cute um the dino days i think is a slightly a little bit more complex one has a slightly more to it so um you're still putting your dinos in over the days of the week to score points um but um and it still says six plus but i think maybe the cards in here have certain different it's, actions i think that it has more it that little bit more bitey i think it's got more take that in it than the other two mm -hmm. do and i think yeah cat days is very similar to Woof Days. Yeah, but cats. So, I mean, if you like cats, dogs or dinos, then these are fantastic. So I think we'll do a couple of playthroughs of these yeah. on the channel because they're nice and quick to play. So um, you will see more of those. And, and they look quite cute together. They like do. That, don't they? If you're wondering where the yeah. dog has gone, Fen has now left us and found solace on the sofa. Perhaps he's accepted the fact that we are not going to go back to yeah. another board game convention anytime soon. <laughs> I think we moved the table and he thought we were moving a house or something <laughs> awful. <laughs> Just <sound> reassured. <laughs> but how did you get on if you went to Aircon? What did you buy? at the bring and buy or just in the, in the retail stores while you're there do let us know in the comments down below yes we'd love to hear from you and of course if you want to buy any of these games yes and you're not at Aircon. has gone so you can't buy from the bring and buy anymore but you can do what we have already done and go to your friendly local game store for us in the southeast of England here it's Chaos Cards and as you probably know if you've watched the channel we do have a discount code in the descriptions it does update regularly but it is a one use each time so do check back when they update and you can use them again to save a few pennies off at the checkout Obviously, if you are new to our channel, maybe you discovered us from our Aircon vlogs, 
Uh, have a watch of those mm -hmm. if you haven't seen them. Um, we are Julian and Libby and we post a board game video right here on YouTube at least twice a week. We do indeed. Uh, so if that's your kind of thing, consider subscribing and uh, joining the discussion down below in the comments. Let's all talk convention bargains and what's your, <laughs> what, what <laughs> gems you've managed to find. Um, we're going to have our best bits of aircon coming up and we'll chat about all of our highlights and things of the con. Um, but for now, that's it from us. Thanks so we'll much for watching. Time. Bye.